Good morning, dear brothers and sisters of Good Neighbor Christian Fellowship, my relatives and friends. Some of my classmates are uh, watching right now. I'm so happy today because last Wednesday and yesterday, Saturday, we were able to conduct our prayer meeting and Bible study for the Good Neighbor Christian Fellowship men and ladies via Zoom. And thank you for this uh, wonderful invention of uh, internet. I wish I could have, I should have done it earlier. Thanks be to God because it was a joyful moment for us seeing each other, praying for one another, and studying the Bible together by uh, Zoom. Today I have requested Ernest Jorick to sing for us the song originally recorded by Scott Wesley Brown, He Will Carry You. You know, through these problems that we have, there's one person who can carry us through, and that is Jesus Christ. And at the end of uh, our worship today, Iris Fay, who is in Oman, will uh, render a solo uh, song entitled Safe. We are safe in the grace of God, in the mercy of God, in the love of God. I want you, I encourage you to listen carefully to the message of these two songs that will be shared to us by EJ and by Iris. And of course, the message about love ably explained and shared to us by Pastor Ted Rebo. You know, over the past seven weeks of enhanced community quarantine or what we call lockdown because of this coronavirus 19 pandemic that uh, has greatly affected our lives giving us problems giving us difficult difficult moments and fear apprehension on what will happen after april 30 when president duterte will lift the ecq and there is uh, even a rumor that it may be extended for another two weeks in uh, Metro Manila. We are all affected by this. I am affected by this. But you know, there is one verse in the Bible that gives strength to me, that gives hope to me. And that is what Jesus Christ told his disciples when the disciples were having some moment of fear because they know that Jesus Christ will lead them. Jesus Christ said these words in John 16, 33. He said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. Problems will be with us. Troubles will be with us. But in the presence of trouble, very clearly stated by Jesus Christ, we can have peace in Him. He has overcome the world, and His power is available to all of us. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthen us or who strengthen me. My friends, we have to trust God. We have to believe in the Word of God. That is why I encourage everyone during this time of lockdown, spend time in reading the Word of God and coming together in our live stream worship to listen to the message that is shared by Pastor Ted Rebo. You know, we have to make a choice. I may, we have a former student in high school, Beth Mortiz. She has a program 
over BCAS entitled Gabay. She will never forget, she will always end her program by saying life is not a series of chances, it is a series of choices. In this life, we have to make choices. And the best choice that we can make is to be with God, to believe in God, to be one in Christ. John 16, 33, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, meaning be of good cheer, be hopeful, because I have overcome the world. Good morning to everyone. I'm praying for you. We have to pray for one another in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
Amen. Good morning po mga kapatid. Tayo po ay nagpapasalamat sa Diyos na minsan pa tayo po ay nakakasama-sama sa pamamagitan ng uh, FB live streaming. Ito po ang special worship service ng Good Neighbor Christian Fellowship. And uh, sa biyaya po ng Diyos sa nakaraang ilang linggo, ngayon po tayo ay nasa last Sunday of the month of April. Atin pong tinalakay uh, sa buong buwan ng April ang theme on love different aspect of love in the bible and for today uh, we will transition uh, our message on loving god and preparing ourselves for our message theme for the month of may sabi po ating chairman pastor armando santos na for the month of may we will be uh, uh, working on the theme of stewardship. So, it, it's a beautiful thing that the Bible is full of lessons and, and full of instructions about uh, loving God and at the same time, becoming a good steward of God. And so for today, allow me to present to you a message entitled, Loving God or Loving Money. And uh, we are thankful to God that... Uh, the Word of God has a lot of beautiful things to say about the subject of love, about the subject of good stewardship, about, about the situation we are in right now. The Word of God is so relevant, like it's uh, applicable to our lives very much today, like it was 2,000 years ago. So please join me in prayer as we uh, open the Word of God so that we can find encouragement and inspiration and instructions for our life in times like this. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are very thankful to you that you have allowed our church, Good Neighbor Christian Fellowship, to continue to grow in spite of the fact that we cannot meet in person. Thank you for the leadership of our chairman, Pastor Armando Santos, and our leaders in the church and our and our uh, volunteers in the church and uh, our brothers and sisters in the church who are always supporting the ministry and the work of God in Good Neighbor Christian Fellowship. And so help us today, even as we open your words, as we seek instruction and guidance and inspiration that you may help us be a better lover of God as we are better steward of God. And we thank you for your love and your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So loving God or loving money. Ang una ko pong gustong buksang scriptures inyo, and we will be opening a few scriptures today. The first one I want to open to you is uh, in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. It opens up in verse 5 saying this, Do not love money. Do not love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. What can mere men do to me? May the Lord bless the reading of His holy word. Don't love money. Sa panahon po natin ngayon, na nagkakahirapan ng pera, Hindi lamang po yung maraming pera ang gusto na may security sila pagting sa pera. E eh, lalong-lalo na po yung mga walang pera o walang hawak na pera. So ang pagiging mukhang pera o mukhang salapi ay wala po doon sa uh, kung ano hawak mo. Sapagkat may mayayaman na hindi mukhang pera. Yung pong salitang don't love money sa Tagalog ay huwag mong mahalin ng pera. Huwag kang maging mukhang pera. Uh, 
si Bill Gates, alam po natin, at one time, siya po ang richest man on earth. Siya po ang pinakamayamang tao sa buong daigdig. Pero dumating po sa point ng kanyang buhay na isinet aside na niya lahat ng kanyang interest sa pagpapayaman. Nagtayo po siya ng foundation, Bill Gates and Melissa Gates Foundation, na kung saan more than half ng lahat ng kanyang kayamanan ay inilagay niya doon sa foundation. At ito pong foundation na ito, ang, ang thrust po nito ay tulungan yung mga mahihirap. Especially po yung apektado ng mga malalang mga karamdaman. Even, even in my wife's hospital, meron silang fund doon. Uh, Bill and Melissa Gates Foundation na kung saan pinopondohan niya po yung mga gamot para sa mga malaria, gamot para sa mga HIV, yung mga research. Ngayon po, uh, I, I heard Billy Gates at, over at CNN talks about their thrust to, to find cure and develop vaccine for the coronavirus. This guy and his wife and his family showed that you can be the richest man on earth and not care so much about money but about using your money to serve humanity. So kung tutuusin, yung pong mga taong isang kahit isang tuka, sila pa ang, ang makikita mong nagmamahal sa pera. To the point na papatay magkapera lang. Magnanakaw, magkapera lang. Mag, mangloloko ng kapwa, magkapera lang. Kaya nga po galit na galit si Duterte doon sa mga tumatanggap ng tulong sa gobyerno. Na hirap na hirap na nga siyang gawa ng paraan na matulungan niya yung mga informal settlers, yung mga informal economy, yung mga poorest of the poor. Uh, pagkatapos po, pag natanggap nila yung pera nila from 5,000 to 8,000, isinasabong isinusugal, binibili ng, ng, ng drugs. This people shows you na kahit po wala kang pera, pero ang isip mo and obsessed ka na magkaroon ng pera. That is the idea. Obsession with money. Love of money. Now, ano po ang cure sa love of money? The Bible says, don't love money But be satisfied with what God has given you. So, insecurity with money, mga kapatid, is, is uh, overcome by your love of God. If you have love for God, if you have faith in God, you will be able to overcome your insecurity with money. In fact, uh, bago ko po balikan ito pong binasa nating verse, gusto ko pong basahin ang isa pang passage sa 1 John chapter uh, chapter 2. It, it also deals with loving God or loving money. 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 and following. Do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. So, hindi pa pwede magsama sa isang puso yung pag-ibig sa sanlibutan at pag-ibig sa Diyos. Verse 16, For the world offers only cravings for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievement and possession. These are not from the Father, but from the world. 17. And this world will be fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God, everyone who loves God, will live forever. So the choice is loving God or loving money. And we know the answer. Of course, ang answer po natin dyan is loving God. Balikan po natin yung Hebrews. Why should we love God and trust God for money? How can we overcome our insecurity with money? Alam niyo po, kaya ang mga tao nagho-hoard ng pera 
Kasi nga po parang ano sila alanganin sila. Halimba po sa grocery, bakit po ba ngayon para nagho-hoarding ng alcohol, nagho-hoarding ng bigas, nagho-hoarding ng mga ng mga dilata. Wala na nga po kaming mabili ng mga noodles na ano, nakuubos na. Sapagkat limited supply, no supply. So you hoard everything you can. Ganun din po sa pera, kapag ka po talaga magipit ang pera, mahirap ang pera, hanggat maaari, you hoard whatever money you can. Kaya nga po ngayong panahong to, dumadami yung mga scam sa internet na nawawala po ang mga pera na pupunta kung saan account kasi na hahak or uh, na suswindle or whatever. So, how you, do you deal with that insecurity? By focusing on God. Ang sabi po dito, Do not love money, but rather be satisfied with what God has provided for you. God will provide. Kaya po hindi, hindi tayo dapat maging sakim sa pera. Sapagkat kung tayo may pananampalataya sa Diyos, at tayo may pagtitiwala sa Diyos, at tayo po ay malapit sa Diyos at sumusunod sa Diyos, God will take care of our needs. So you be happy, you be satisfied with what God has provided. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, He will provide. For God has said, I will never leave you, I will never abandon you. Hindi kita iiwanan, hindi kita pababayaan. Hindi ko pababayaan na wala ka ng mga bagay na mahalaga sa'yo. I will not leave you without means. I will sustain you. I will provide for you. I will be there for you. So it will overcome your insecurity with money. Insecurity with with material things it's security with money uh, with, with 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 food and everything else that we need kung tayo po ay may pagmamahal sa Diyos at nagtitiwala sa Diyos sabi niya magtiwala ka masiyahan ka sapagkat ang Diyos ang nangako hindi kanya iiwanan hindi kanya pababayaan he will never fail you kaya sabi niya verse 6 We can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. Sa panahon po ngayon mga kapatid, wala nang, wala nang uh, stronger pa dyan sa ganyang confidence. The Lord is my helper. Hmm. It's not just the government is my helper. God is bigger and stronger than any government. Lagi ko pong pinanonood ang uh, mga balita dyan sa CNN. And lagi po ako nakikinig sa mga commentary. Even today, ay nagkakagulo sila. Uh, alam niyo naman po, ang, ang labanan dyan, uh, uh, Democrats and Republicans, nagkakagulo sila sapagkat may mga sector ng society na nagsasabi, let's open up the economy. Yan po ang uh, marching order ni Trump sa mga supporter niya. Let's open up the economy. The sooner the better. May mga tao nang panagsasabi na no, wait a minute. We risk second wave of infection. Hindi pa nga natin napaplat yung curve. Delikado yan. But then again, ang, ang, ang sitwasyon po nila mga kapatid is, how do you balance between the need of people to work and the need of people to stay healthy to to shelter in place and to to practice social distancing to to stay home and be safe mga kapatid sa ganyang confusion sa ganya pong struggle uh, papasok yung pong importansya ng pananampalataya sa Diyos sapagkat Kung ang pananampalataya mo ay sa Diyos, meron kang confidence, meron ka pong assurance, meron ka pong peace in your heart. The Lord is my helper. Si Donald Trump, lahat na lang ng klaseng stimulus package para sa mga uh, nagpas po sila ng pinakamalaki in history na aid package para po sa mga un unemployed. And there are more than 20 million unemployed people in America at the moment and, and, and more and more millions more are losing their jobs every day their means of livelihood wala na silang pambili ng pagkain wala na silang pang, pangrenta sa bahay and everything else and it's really scary the way you see it and even the richest country in the world cannot cope 
lahat ng industry nila, lahat ng airline industry, lahat ng oil industry, lahat ng mga medium scale industry, it's all falling. But let me tell you, the Lord is my helper. So when your government fails you, you look up to God. You are not hopeless. You look up to God. The Bible says, the Lord is my helper. Kapag wala nang magawa ang tao, alam kong may magagawa ang Diyos. Di ba? That is our song. Every time we have our prayer in the church, alam kong may magagawa ang Diyos. Ang Diyos ay Diyos ng Himala. Alam kong diringgin ako ng Diyos. Alam kong may magagawa ang Diyos. Let's just keep on saying that and saying that to ourselves and reminding and reminding ourselves that God can make a way where there seems to be no way. In times like this, what do we do? Ngayon po ang debate, eh, ano po ba ang gagawin? Extended po ba ang, ang ECQ? O ililift na po ba ang ECQ? Ano po ba ang desisyon? Ano po ba ang dapat? Ano po ba ang tama? Ano po ba maganda sa ating bansang Pilipinas? Then again, may risk. Kung ililift na ang ECQ, yung risk ng second wave of infection. Kung hindi naman po ililift, ang risk niyan, yung mga tao po talagang nagugutom na, what do we do? How can we handle it? Talaga po namang, you are between a rock and a hard place. Whether sa America, sa Pilipinas, it's all over the world. And least, really, if you put your hope in men, you will, you will be disappointed. If you put your hope in men, you will be hopeless. You put our hope in God. And you just remind yourself, the Lord is my helper. I will have no fear. I will have no fear. Yan po ang lagi niyang tinatanong sa kanyang mga alagad. Where is your faith? Hinahanap niya, where is your faith? Nung sila po ay nasa bangka at sila po ay, uh, ay uh, dinatna ng bagyo at sila po ay lumulubog, ginising nila si Jesus, Panginoon, gumising ka. Malulunod na tayo, mamamatay tayo. Tumayo si Jesus, pinatahimik niya ang bagyo at tinanong niya ang mga alagad, Where is your faith? Oh, you men of little faith. Fear is an expression of lack of faith. It's a manifestation of lack of faith. Sa panahon ngayon, pag tayo po eh, Laging nangangamba, laging natatakot, laging nag-aalala, laging balisa. I-check po natin yung ating faith. Sapagkat kung ikaw po ay may matibay na faith in God, you can say this with the writer of Hebrew, The Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. If the Lord will help you, if the Lord will provide for you, if the Lord will heal you, then I will have no fear. Yung po sabi niya, what can mere men do to me? Kaya nga po, ngayon po uh, tayo po ay nagdi-discuss nito po loving God. If you love God above all, and you put your trust in God, you put your confidence in God, you will have contentment. You will have contentment. Yan po sabi dyan eh. Be contented with what God has given you. Be satisfied with what God has given you. And don't love money. Because God said, I will never fail you. Never. When God says never, it means never. God will never fail you. I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Yun, yun po ang sabi doon. Now, uh, meron pong isang parable na ikinuwento si Jesus that I would like to use as I close this message today in the book of uh, Luke chapter 12 ito po yung foolishness ng mga tao na ang kanila pong confidence ay nilalagay nila sa pera at hindi sa Diyos ang pera po galing sa Diyos ang blessings po galing sa Diyos Praise God from whom all blessings flow. That's beautiful. Praise God from whom all blessings 
flow. Lahat po yan galing sa Diyos. Good health is from God. Money in our pockets is from God. Provisions all from God. So praise God from whom all blessings flow. But here is, here is an example of people who have forgotten that. Luke chapter 12, beginning with verse 13. Please listen as I read to you. Sinabi ni Jesus, Sinabi kay Jesus ng isa sa mga naroon, Guru, iutos mo po sa kapatid ko na ibigay sa akin ang bahagi ng aking mana. Yan. So pinag-usapan nila, pera, mana. Sumagot si Jesus, Ginoo sino ang naglalagay sa akin bilang hukom o tagapaghati ng mana. Ang, ang pera, mana, hindi yan ang main concern ni Jesus. Gusto niya ipakita dito. Uh, as good stewards of God, lahat yan galing sa Diyos. In fact, that's the issue about stewardship. Stewardship is knowing who God is and who we are. Fact number one, God owns everything. Lahat po yan sa Diyos. Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So He created it, it belongs to Him. Everything belongs to Him. So stewardship lesson number one, God owns everything. Stewardship lesson number two, what we have is from God. We are merely stewards of God. Tayo po ay katiwala lamang ng lahat ng ipinagkatiwala sa atin ng Diyos. Pero dahil nga po sa kawalan natin ng pag-ibig sa Diyos, kawalan natin ng pananampalataya sa Diyos, kawalan natin ng pagpapahalaga sa Diyos, mas minamahal natin yung pera kesa, kesa sa pagmamahal natin sa Diyos. Kaya po ito ay uh, ibinigay niya itong parabol na ito para magbigay sa atin ng lesson. Sinabi niya, verse 15, Mag-ingat kayo sa lahat ng uri ng kasakiman. Again, hindi lang po mayaman ang sakim. May mga mayaman na sakim. Pero may mga, may mga mahihirap din po na sakim. Yung kasakiman o yung greed, wala po yan sa dami ng pera o, o kakonti alang pera. Yan po yung attitude towards money. Attitude towards God. If you love money more than you love God, What you have is greed. That's what you have. Kaya nga, mag-ingat daw kayo sa lahat ng uri ng kasakiman o greed. Sapagkat ang buhay ng tao ay wala sa laki ng kanyang kayamanan. Huwag ka doon tumingin sa kayamanan. At pagkatapos, isinaysay niya itong talinhaga. Ang, ang bukiri ng isang mayaman ay umani ng sagana. Kahit nasabi niya sa sarili niya, ano ang gagawin ko? Wala na akong paglagyan ng aking ani. Can you imagine na? Ito pong magsakang ito ay napakaraming inani to the point na wala na siyang paglagyan. Imagine niyo sa dami ng kayamanan, wala nang paglagyan. Sa dami po ng kanyang ani, wala nang paglagyan. May mga tao pong ganyan, wala nang mapaglagyan. And I guess, si Bill Gates, at one point, yon ang kanyang kalaya, wala na siyang mapaglagyan. Buti na lang nagkaroon siya ng, ng uh, mabuting puso. As far as I know, the wife of Bill Gates is a very religious person. And I think she, Melissa Gate has a, a lot of good influence on Bill Gates. That, then, that they realize money is nothing. God is everything. Money is nothing. Helping, loving your neighbor as you love yourself is everything. That's a good lesson on loving God and loving your neighbor as you love yourself. And not loving money. Sabi niya, wala na akong mapaglagyan ng aking ani. Ano po gagawin niya? Verse 18. Ah, gigibain ko ang aking mga kamalig at magtatayo ako ng lalong mas malalaki. Doon ko ilalagay ang aking ani at ari-arian. I will expand. Because my, my, uh, my barns are not big enough. Paglagyan ng ani at ari-arian, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand. I'm gonna tear down this and make bigger ones. Yun po sabi niya. Hindi na ako kukulangin habang buhay. Yun, sabi niya. Secured na siya. Ang kanyang security nasa kayamanan, nasa ari-arian, nasa ani, nasa pera. Yun ang kanyang security. So sabi niya, ah, 
Hindi na ako kukulangin habang buhay. Kaya mamamahinga na lang ako. Kakain, iino, magsasaya. I made it for life. Kakain, iino, magsasaya. Enjoy life. I have everything I need. I'm secured. I have all the money I need in the world. I have all the possessions I need in the world. I am absolutely secured. Oh yeah? Verse 20. Ngunit sinabi sa kanya ng Diyos, Hangal! You fool! Why? Sapagkat sa gabing ito'y babawian ka na ng buhay. This is the word, babawian na ka na ng buhay. Minsa po nakakalimutan ng tao na ang buhay natin ay hiram. Hiram na buhay. Borrowed life. Borrowed time. Everything is borrowed. And one day, yung hiniram mo, isosoli mo. Saan galing yan? Sa Diyos. Isosoli mo sa Diyos. It all belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. You belong to God. Someday, God will require that you return everything to Him. And then you return to dust. Because dust you are, to dust you return. Yun. That's, that's who you are. You are dust. That's what it says. Ngunit sinabi sa kanya ng Diyos, Hangal! Kanino mapupunta ang mga bagay na inihanda mo? Yun. Sa, kanino mapupunta? Nobody knows kung ano mangyayari sa lahat ng ating pinagpaguran, sa lahat ng ating pinaghirapan, sa lahat ng ating sakripisyo, sa pera, sa pagkat pag tayo na matay, mapupunta siya kung sino man ang magmamana niyan. At yung pagmamanahan natin, they could be good, they'll be bad, malulusta yan, and it will all come down to nothing. Nothing. Ganyan ang sasapiti ng mga nagtitipo ng kayamanan sa sarili, ngunit dukha naman sa paningin ng Diyos. Doon po pumapasok yung good stewardship. Pag wala kang ginawa, kundi puro pera, 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 ang sabi po dito, ikaw ay dukha sa paningin ng Diyos. mag ng kayamanan sa langit. Sapagkat ang kayamanan sa langit ay hindi nawawala, hindi, nas- hindi, hindi kinakalawang, hindi nananakaw. Hmm. Pero ang kayamanan sa lupa ay nawawala, nasusunog, nananakaw. Hmm. Kaya sabi ni Kristo, doon ka mag sa kaharian ng langit. When you use your money to serve God, When you use your money to help other people, that is loving God and that is good stewardship. Kaya nga po sa mga next week po ay May, we will deal more with biblical stewardship and good stewardship. But the, but the root foundation of good stewardship is loving God. Do not love the world. Because those who love the world do not have the love of the Father in them. It's a matter of love. It's a question of love. Kaya po, uh, nagpapasalamat po tayo sapagkat uh, tayo po na nakakakilala sa Panginoon eh nandun po ang ating katiyakan. Oh. Balik ko nga lang po yung uh, sinabi sa atin sa Book of Hebrews na verse 13. This time, babasahin ko po sa Tagalog. Yung Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Dito po tayo magtatapos. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Huwag kayong magmukhang salapi. Masiyahan na kayo sa anumang nasa inyo. Yan. Masiyahan tayo sa lahat ng mga ibinibigay ng Diyos, ipinoprovide ng Diyos sa atin. Sapagkat sinabi ng Diyos, hindi kita iiwan. Hindi kita pababayaan. Yan po ang pangako niya. Verse 6, at walang pag-aagam-agam na masasabi natin, we can say with confidence, ang Panginoon ang tumutulong sa akin. So sa panahon ngayon, ano man ang ating kalagayan, ano man ang mangyayari sa kinabukasan, meron po tayong ganyang confidence, meron ganyan tayong assurance, ang Panginoon ang tumutulong sa akin. Hindi ako matatakot. Pagmahal natin ng Diyos, fear, perfect love, cast out fear. If you love the Lord, then fear will have no place in your heart because because perfect love cast out. It will kick out fear. Kung meron pong fear sa ating puso at nandiyan ang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa ating puso, that love of God, the love of God will cast
cast out fear. And sabi niya, ang Panginoon ang tumutulong sa akin, hindi ako matatakot sapagkat ano ang magagawa sa akin ng tao. Salamat po sa inyong pagsama sa atin at uh, tayo pong lahat ay manalangin. Panginoon, we declare our love for you today. We love you above all riches. We love you above all possession. We love you above all things. And we thank you, God, for loving us. You love us so much that you gave us those promises. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you. I will help you. Don't fear. So, Panginoon, tulungan mo po na sa aming pagharap sa lahat ng mga uncertainty ng buhay, kami po ay humarap ng may kapayapaan, ng may katiyakan, ng may pananampalataya, na kailanman hindi kami iiwanan ng Panginoon. Salamat po sa lahat ng aming pong mga natutunan sa iyong mga salita in the month of April about different aspect of love, the love of God, the love of Jesus. At dalangin po namin, Ama, na tulungan mo po kami, Panginoon, na maging mga mabubuting katiwala ng lahat ng ipinagkatiwala mo sa amin. Dalangin po namin sa month of May, ang aming mga lessons ay maging pagpapala sa amin at tulungan kami na maging tunay na mabubuting katiwala ng Diyos sapagkat mahal namin ang Diyos. Dalangin din po namin sa iyo, Panginoon, na uh, kung iyong uh, iaalaw, Panginoon, sa mga linggong darating, ay makapag, magkaroon na po ng uh, freedom ang mga churches na makabalik na sa kanilang mga simbahan, sa kanilang mga gawain. Tuluan mo po, Panginoon, na ang cases ng coronavirus sa aming bansa, Panginoon, ay, ay magkaroon na po, Panginoon, ng uh, total control. Yung transmission will be controlled para po kami makabalik na sa aming mga trabaho, makabalik na kami sa aming mga ministeryo, sa aming mga paglilingkod, sa aming mga araw-araw na buhay. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, na tulungan po ang mga uh, experts na makahanap na, Panginoon, ng vaccine. Tulungan mo po, Panginoon, na ang aming po mga frontliners ay makakita, Panginoon, ng magandang cure and management for this disease. Dalangin po namin sa iyo, Panginoon, na huwag nang kumalat ito pong sickness na ito sa aming bansa. At dalangin po namin sa iyo, Panginoon, na tulungan mo na manumbalik na ang normal na buhay ng mga tao sa buong sanlibutan. Hoping, Panginoon, na silang lahat ay matutong tumawag sa iyo. Silang lahat, Panginoon. Kaming lahat ay matuto, Panginoon, magpakumbaba at manalangin at magtiwala na ang Diyos namin ay nagmamahal sa amin ng higit sa lahat. Pagpalain po aming church. Pagpalain po, Panginoon, aming mga members. Pagpalain po, Panginoon, aming mga pamilya. Pagpalain po, Panginoon, ang lahat po ng aming mga pangangailangan at kami po nagtitiwala, Ama, na kailanman hindi mo kami iiwanan o pababayaan man. Ito po aming dalangin sa iyo, Panginoon, sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and Amen. Mga kapatid, salamat po sa iyo pong uh, pag-join sa atin. Salamat po sa lahat ng mga nasa uh, technical side of uh, this presentation ng ating pong mensahe. At uh, ipanalangin po natin na uh, yung apni po mga kapatid na uh, may mga karamdaman. Uh, I'm sure ay uh, kinukontak po kayo ni Chairman doon po sa mga kapatid natin nangangailangan ng prayers. Let's continue to lift them in prayer. May mga kapatid po tayo sa Marikina na uh, maaaring na-expose sa uh, nagkaroon ng coronavirus. Meron po tayo mga kapatira na Uh, nasa ospital, mayroon tayo mga kapatiran na may karamdaman at nangangailangan ng ating mga panalangin. So, sama-sama po tayong manalangin para sa kanila at uh, tulungan ng Panginoon na sila po'y makarecover ng mabilis. Samahan niyo po ako sa closing prayer and benediction. Lord God, itinataas po namin sa iyo ngayong uh, umagang ito, mga kapatid namin, Panginoon, na uh, may karamdaman. Ikaw po, Panginoon, ang aming manggagamot. Ikaw po ang nangako, I am the God that heals you. Uh, kaya po, Panginoon, sa iyo kami unang lumalapit. Ikaw po ang nag pinanggagalingan ng buhay, pinanggagalingan ng lakas, ng kagalingan. Kaya kami lumalapit sa iyo, Panginoon. In the name of Jesus, hipuin mo po yung mga may karamdaman. In the name of Jesus, bigyan mo siya ng lakas ng katawan, Panginoon. In the name of Jesus, bigyan mo po sila ng, ng, ng kagalingan upang sila po ay ay makapanumbalik na, Panginoon, sa lakas ng kanilang resistance. And we pray 
na kayo din po Panginoon ang siyang mag-provide ng lahat ng kanilang mga pangangailangan upang Panginoon masapatan nila Panginoon ang mga gastusin sa kanila pong uh, pag-ospital at sa kanila pong mga gamot. Yung pong mga kapatid namin Panginoon na maaari na expose na langin namin ama ang patuloy pong pagpapalakas sa kanila mga immune system that they may be strong enough O Lord not to go down with this with this virus. Nalangin po namin, Panginoon, mga kapatid namin, uh, araw-araw ay Panginoon humaharap sa uh, danger because sila po ay mga frontliners, yung po mga lumalabas para sila tagabili, Panginoon, ng mga gamot at tagabili ng mga pagkain na tagakuha ng mga relief goods. Nalangin namin na uh, lahat ng mga lumalabas, Panginoon, ay sasamahan mo, uh, shield them, you, you shield them, Lord, from this coronavirus. At nalangin po namin naman sa iyo ang aming po mga pangangailangan every day. It's getting harder and harder every day for many of us. Kaya po, Ama, sa'yo po kami humihingi ng tulong at ng biyaya, Panginoon. At pagpalaan po ang aming church, again, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift us His countenance upon you and give you peace, now and forever, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.
Are on you and yours are on me. Cause when I'm with 